today we are in part three of break three i believe today's message might be the most important message you will hear in your life i rarely make those statements and i pray for god's grace upon each one of us here today and those who will be re-watching it and re-listening i want to answer and help people this is not going to be for every person people who keep falling into the same sin this message will deal with that issue a few months ago i was uh, in the place getting uh, getting ready to get my hair cut done as i was waiting in the lobby a young man approached me and he asked me the question he says can i talk to you and i said well of course yes yeah, sit down i'm waiting to get a to get to get called in as he begins to sit down he begins to tell me about his issue and he says hey i need to tell you i'm struggling with this this sin it's crazy like the moment people find out you're a pastor everybody starts you know they think you're a priest and stuff so i'm like i'm like well you need to do it official you know uh father uh, uh how, how does it go in the catholic church father i have sinned forgive me father for i have sinned come on catholics you guys kind of hook me help, help me out and stuff so so but he didn't start like that he didn't start father forgive me father i have sinned and he just began to say i'm struggling with this and i kind of right away discerned what it is and as he goes in and he's like i go to church i'm a christian and he says i keep falling into it so i asked him a little bit more information and i could see you know a great shame and guilt on his face and so when he told me what it was and I asked him if he prayed about it, if he told somebody about it, if he confessed it, if he renounced it, he said, Vlad, he says, I've done most of these things and it keeps happening again. And this guy's about to be breaking, <laughs> breaking in tears right before I get called in. And so, and I start to minister to him, start telling him what I'm about to share with you on how to find freedom. But most importantly, how to overcome that struggle of repeated sin. His biggest issue of course was with guilt and with shame and how can I be a Christian and still fall into this issue? How can I be a Christian and still struggle with this problem? And I told him was something that the Bible says that the righteous man falls seven times and he gets up. Are you with me? The Bible says the righteous falls seven times and rises again. Somebody say rises again. But the wicked stumbles in times of calamity, meaning a wicked takes one fall and he never gets up again. And so I tell this man, I say, what makes you righteous is not your inability to fall. Righteous people fall, but righteous people get up and you can be righteous and still fall into the same thing in the same place once a day. What the difference is between righteous and the wicked is the righteous doesn't stay down righteous he gets up but it's difficult to get up if you fell into the same ditch all over again because of the fear that i will fall again what's the point of getting up and i'm telling this young man i say you have to see yourself not from a religious perspective you have to see yourself from the perspective of a father and a child i said when you were a kid and you were learning to walk you fell again and again and again every single day did you give up on walking because you couldn't learn to walk? Did your parents pull out a belt the first time you took a step and you fell and they whooped you? <laughs> no, they didn't. And if they did, <laughs> you need to call police. <laughs> a father and a mother stands there with the child falling into the same floor. Takes one step, pa -bam! They, get, they pick him up and they don't simply say, well, our child is not destined to walk. Our child is not meant to walk. He's tried seven days already. He already has blood in here. He fell. He cries. The child doesn't want to try to walk. Our child is not meant to walk. No. A daddy and a mommy understands one thing. is that It's a process of walking. You fall more. But later on, you learn to walk so good that you fall less in 10 years than you fell as a child in 10 minutes. But when you're a kid, when you're learning to walk, the devil is there to remind you, you will never walk. You will never be pure. You will never be smoke free. You will never be free from alcohol. You will never be free from the tormenting thoughts of your abuse. 
you will never be free from the nightmares you will never be free from anxiety you will never be free from depression the fears and the phobias you will never be free from that your insecurity that is who you are why because look at how many times you've fallen in these many times but what the devil does not know is God doesn't stand and check if you stand or fall God is a father stands with his hands stretched forward and he said come on take one more step you fell but God says come on come on get up he is a father not a religious dictator measuring your righteousness based on how you fall or not somebody give God praise right now hallelujah the Bible says a righteous man falls seven times but he gets up the Bible also says that a righteous man has many afflictions are you with me but the Lord delivers him out of them all the righteous man has many afflictions but the Lord delivers him out of them all Jesus said in Matthew he says when you pray our father who is in heaven that means we are children of God your kingdom come your will be done and then it inserts this prayer deliver us from the devil now how many of you know if you're delivered you don't pray that prayer that means that you can be a child of God and still be needing deliverance See the religious world will tell you that if you need deliverance something is wrong with your Christianity but we see in the Bible that you can be righteous and fall you can be righteous and still need deliverance and so I'm telling this young man I said the reason why you fall is not because you're not righteous you're just not free the reason you keep repeating the same sin is not because you're not a Christian it's because you're not free and don't let anybody just tell you that just because you're a Christian or just because you are righteous that means you're automatically free you're automatically righteous but you're not yet automatically free just because you were born as a child and you got two of your legs on the same day you were born they were not shipped by FedEx two years later just because you got your legs how many of you know you did not learn to walk the day you got your legs just because you got salvation and just because you gift of righteousness your name is in that book of life it doesn't mean you're actually walking in that freedom that's why you got your mama you got a daddy who doesn't beat you when you fall who pick you up and say try it again try it again give me a little bit more juice in my microphone until we get this thing warmed up and then we can lower it down try it again and I told something to this young man I said the challenge happens with us the reason why we many of us don't get free it's not just the power of sin it's the culture of church we are in which stones people who fall when I was addicted to pornography and I struggled with insecurity at my teenage years and on top of that I had extremely migrant headaches during the summer put all of these three, th three things together and going through the puberty talking about a world war three inside of you literally you're confused you're scared you feel shame and guilt you got demons screaming and whispering because the devil knew that God had a plan for my future and he knew that the best way to knock this guy out is in his infancy it's when he's confused when he doesn't know he takes one step and he falls two steps but I thank to God that I had a church and I had a pastor and I had a church that that did not throw stones when they found my sin and didn't publicize it and punished me for it but they restored me gently and the pastor didn't remove those sins from me but he said listen you got it boy you're gonna do better you're gonna recover from this you're gonna be fine you, you, you God is still with you you still have ministry inside of you I know you're bound by those things but you're still righteousness you're still God's child and we love you and everything is gonna be all right It gave me a sense of I'm gonna be fine did it make me enjoy my sin heck no I'm sorry I shouldn't have said that that's a bad word no it did not let me enjoy my sin because the difference between a swine and a sheep is the swine enjoys the mud a sheep cries in the mud I cried in my mud but if somebody washed me off of it and somebody said listen you can be you will be recovered maybe not today but you will be free the churches today exist they're more like hyenas or somebody falls and bleeds and they attack and they go, everybody goes for a pound of flesh they're like sharks in the sea when they see blood they go and attack they publicize things it's kind of like what happened to the judge you know where stuff just became bloated up and we go in like Pharisees and we, we want to attack we want to publicize it why because it gives a sense of self-righteousness 
the church that you come into today I want to tell you something we don't shoot our own wounded soldiers because church is the only army at some places where shoots its own wounded soldiers we shoot one enemy his name is the devil his name is demons and his name is sin we protect our people we fight for our people we pray for our people we restore our people we love our people we forgive our people we raise our people we encourage our people somebody give God shout in this place you may say you can take your seats you may say how dare did you call people hyenas they're worse than that because if I go to the doctor and I am bleeding and they bring me to emergency and the doctor of the hospital gathers the nurses to throw rocks at me, they're hyenas. They're not doctors. We're as church, we're not religious, crazy, perfect people. We are a hospital and we help hurting people. One of the reasons many people don't recover and don't get set free is because you can't grow bananas in Alaska. You can't be free if the religious environment you are in judges a sinner instead of restores a sinner. We know sin is sin, is sin, sin is bad, but the sinners need help. And if we all get really, really honest, we realize we still got some stuff we need help in. Come on somebody. Behind the religious facade, behind the religious mask, and behind the perfection and the good Christian quotes on Instagram, we still got stuff. The only difference is my stuff is not as bad as your stuff, but it's still stuff. And I need help from God with it. Come on, somebody. We want to build a church where people who are saints can struggle and find hope. Instead of pretend that the moment you come out and something happens and you fell or you're struggling we all gather like a bunch of hyenas and eat you for lunch and my pastor he didn't do that to me he gave me compassion I was scared I remember first time I confessed my sin I thought I will be presented to the board of all the Pentecostal churches in the world I thought that they're gonna drag my, my name through the mud and this little poor teenager is gonna be kicked out of the church and when he showed compassion and he showed mercy, did you think I wanted to do that sin? No, I hated it more, but it gave me a sense of hope. People sometimes who hear me speak about deliverance, they say, Vlad, there's one thing that we feel is we feel help. We feel that you're for people. And I said, the reason why is because that was extended to me. And if it wouldn't be for that, I would never be in this place. There are people in this room today and some of you, you went through places where you fell and you've been in a religious institution that they dragged you through mud. They had everybody say their stupid opinion about what they thought about your issue and like that woman caught in the act of adultery everybody threw stuff at you and your connection to God today is that experience listen what you experience is a bunch of hyenas not savior it's religious world it's vicious and it's mean and it's rude religious people could be the meanest people in the world Jesus Christ is a little bit different he looked at the woman caught in the act of adultery who didn't have a chance to respond to the altar call and he says listen woman she didn't even repent she didn't even apologize she got caught and he says I don't condemn you go and sin no more if we don't give people grace if we don't give people help we don't give them power to overcome the sin that they're stuck in and so I want to tell you something that today in this church I know I'm afraid sometimes people will misunderstand this message and continue their sin without understanding that the grace is not an excuse but a power to overcome your sin but I'll rather err on grace than hurt people because while hurting people I'm also hurting myself because I'm also people can somebody say amen so with that said I want to look at I want to look at um, Oh my goodness, we got to finish it and I haven't even started. I want to look at one guy in the Bible. His name was Lazarus. And when Lazarus died, as you saw, the Bible says they put him in the tomb. I could not bring the tomb from Jerusalem. So I found a cheaper version of it. Thank you, Mike Melnick. And, um, and so when Jesus came to Lazarus' tomb, the Bible says Lazarus was dead. And not only he was dead but he was covered inside of a tomb and this is what Jesus says Jesus called up some people if I could have Bryson and Jesus said he says I want you to open the tomb open the tomb open the tomb 
no the camera who's the floating camera come over here so that the live viewers can see those of you who are not able to see Lazarus is right here he is dead Lazarus be dead so to close your eyes all right Jesus stood from a distance and the Bible says now Lazarus is dead he's gone the fact that he's wrapped up in grave clothes is one thing and Jesus stood there and he said this he said Lazarus come out and at that moment Lazarus got raised from the dead now you don't see that right now but I can tell you one thing C come over here and help me Lazarus his eyes is open like can you breathe mm -hmm. he's alive he's alive now Lazarus is alive I want you to watch this his resurrection was such a big miracle everybody stood outside were amazed that he's raised from the dead how many of you know it's a big deal I want you to come out I want you to come out I want you to see one thing is that Jesus tells Lazarus to come out what we don't pay what we don't see a lot of times is that nobody helps him out in his grave clothes he's trying to come out the crowd is standing there and so and probably these clothes were not like these they were maybe a little bit lighter but nevertheless I want you to see this is that he had to come out of the grave with his clothes that were tying him up and he slowly it's a, it's a struggle struggle go ahead go ahead keep keep going come, come out Lazarus come out come out come out you're doing great you're doing amazing now I'm gonna give him just a little help Bryson would you, would you help me to help Lazarus get on his feet so let's get him on his feet oh thank you father thank you Jesus amen 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 thank you Lord all right Lazarus thank you so much thank you, thank you Bryson okay so Lazarus Lazarus came out thank you Jesus I want you to see this the biggest miracle such a big deal is that he's alive but he doesn't feel that it's a big deal that he's alive when Lazarus became alive the first thing that happened to him he got confused <laughs> what am I doing here <laughs> why are these people gathered why is Jesus screaming at me why am I in this clothes who chose this red tie why am I here I want you to notice this your righteousness is a big deal your rags are not they're only big deal if you're in them for everyone outside the fact you're breathing is a huge deal everybody outside stands to say oh my god he's alive but because you're on the inside you say this sucks this is bad this is hard the fact that you have a new heart inside of you is a big deal the fact that you are addicted is not your name is lit written in the Lamb's book of life is a big deal the fact that you're hurting is not now to you it's the big deal because you're here you're hurting you're suffering you're confused but honestly I want to put it into perspective of every person that is hurting and struggling right now the fact you have righteousness inside of you is the biggest deal it's the biggest celebration hallelujah you know I don't pay attention to these things if this would have been my brother as Mary and Martha I would be stoked and excited the fact that he's alive I wouldn't be bothered with the fact that he got robes I want to tell you something right now. now I'm not in any way downplaying power of sin I just don't want to downplay the power of God I don't want to downplay the, the power of sonship and the power of righteousness I don't want to downplay the power of the forgiveness of sins and the power of the blood of Jesus on the cross and I want to tell you something these rags yes they're bad yes they're horrible but the power of death that's been defeated in you already is a big deal it's such a big deal hallelujah that is a big deal 
The fact that 2,000 years ago Jesus crushed the head of the serpent, that is a big deal. The fact that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, that is a big deal. I know you still have a cigarette once in a while, but the big deal is that you're alive inside. That's why the cigarette doesn't feel comfortable in your mouth. That's why pornography doesn't feel normal. That's why sleeping with your girlfriend doesn't feel right. Because you're alive. See, religious people, we see this. But Jesus stands there and he's like, the guy is alive. God in heaven stands, you're alive. I want to tell you something right now. Because you're alive, you're not feeling comfortable with these things. Sleeping with your girlfriend is not the same as it was before you were alive. That doing the things that you're doing right now, it just does not feel right. Living a lesbian homosexual life seems just fine. That's what everybody does. When you become alive, you realize that that's not, that's not right. And, and it's not just because the preacher told you. It's because something in you tells you that that is not how I was wired, created, fashioned and purposed by God. But what I want to show you right now is this, is when Lazarus became alive. That's such a big deal. Take your eyes off of your bondage and your repeated sin and struggle. Look at the fact that Jesus gave you salvation and it's only because of their salvation that you're able even to feel a sense of conviction and a sense of this is not right. But I want you to see this. is Jesus tells Lazarus not to become alive. He tells him to come out. Watch this. He doesn't send disciples and say, guys, Lazarus is there. Get him out. Jesus doesn't go to the tomb himself and says, Lazarus, let me help you out. He tells a dead man who is bound, come toward me. And he was after. Lazarus took steps. Lazarus, come. 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 Come, <sighs> stay here. <laughs> it was after Lazarus took steps that Jesus sent people to help him become free. What I want to tell some of you here today is after God gives you righteousness, He doesn't always bring you freedom, but He does ask you. To walk toward him in bondage. That's why I titled this message, Struggle is Real. God wants you, please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. God wants you to struggle toward him. You're struggling but toward him. Jesus is stands there. He could easily snap his finger and everything will be gone. But Jesus stands there and says, Lazarus, walk. He knows it's not comfortable. He knows it's painful. He knows that it's, it doesn't feel right. But Jesus says, walk toward me, Lazarus. And when Lazarus takes those steps, then Jesus says, now go and help him to be free. Between here and there is where most Christians spiritually die. And they go back to their grave and they say this is too painful. I feel an inward conflict. I keep doing the same thing and I keep falling into the same sin. And then God forbid you got some hyenas next to you. They're, ah! They go in and start attacking you and say how dare you not fast enough. Come on hurry up hurry up come on you should be better by now. And then they start pushing and then they start pushing. But, but, but I want you to walk to Jesus when you struggle. Three things I want you to write it down in two minutes and then three things to take home with you. Number one, when you struggle, before you get free, learn to overcome your, your guilt before you overcome your sin. Write this down. Learn to overcome your guilt before you overcome your sin. The process of this struggle, the most powerful part in this struggle is not your sin, it's your guilt. Guilt is more powerful than sin because sin lasts 5, 20, 50 minutes tops. Guilt lasts 5 years, 50 years. Guilt is like a smoke machine. Sin is like that smoke machine. It releases smoke for about 5 minutes or well if it releases smoke for 5 minutes this we have a big problem. 
it releases smoke like right now it just released smoke just a little bit but the smoke stays way longer than the release of that smoke then you have to open windows to get the smoke out I want to tell you something if you fall into the same sin again and again and you ask God for forgiveness and he forgives you your biggest battle is no longer just with that sin it's with the guilt that sin brings and I want to tell you this one big revelation the guilt is not from God it's from your sin God who took care of your sin wants you to open the windows of your soul open your heart to his grace and get the smoke out He's not going to take away the guilt. He wants you to overcome it by open the windows of your soul and get it out. Get, get your soul out to the cross. Get your mind open to the cross. You may say, Vlad, how can I receive the freedom from guilt if it's the same sin I fall into? It's very simple. It's the same way kid keeps getting up and the parents are standing there with stretched arms. It's very simple. God asks you to forgive one person over 400 times in one day. If God asks you to forgive someone, I'm pretty sure He can forgive you. God doesn't want you to live in guilt. For me to overcome condemnation and for me to overcome that addiction that I had, before I overcame pornography, I had to learn to overcome guilt. And it was very simple but very profound and extremely difficult. When I fell, I got up and I asked Jesus, I said, Jesus, please forgive me. I am a wretched sinner. Wash me with your blood. And then I told Vlad, that Jesus forgave you right now get up and pretend it didn't happen and I played a pretense game when I walked out of that room my feelings were still all juggled up you you're weird you're crazy you keep falling you you're a sinner but I told myself I am a new creation Jesus forgot it and I choose not to remember it it never happened again I didn't fall into the same sin because I forgot that last time I fall you may say that's a mind game no that's a renewing of your mind you overcome your guilt and that's how you overcome your sin number two you stop seeking God for freedom you seek God for God after a while you have to walk forward not so you can get free you have to walk forward so you can clo get close to God when you get close to God God will start giving you freedom don't seek freedom seek God I know it hurts to be bound it hurts to fall into the same pattern but I want to challenge each one of you. Stop using God to get freedom. Love God to get God. Freedom will come. Not right away, but it will come. Maybe not right now, but it will come. Fall in love with God. Because if you use God to get freedom, many of you will abandon God after you get freedom. That's why you pray hard when you're in bondage and don't pray at all when you're free. God never wanted to be a someone you use to get free. God wanted someone you love. First commandment is not get free. First commandment is love you, the Lord your God. Fall in love with God. Is it easy to love God when you're in bondage? I want you to jump. Is it easy to walk to God? <laughs> it's interesting how he's not free, but because he took the step, you're already celebrating. You're reflecting the nature of Jesus. I want to tell you something that it's not easy to love God when you're hurting. You will struggle, but I'm going to tell you one thing. Value progress, not perfection. Value you one step closer to the Lord and you will see fall in. I don't want our church to be in love with freedom. I want our church to be in love with the deliverer. To be in love with Jesus that whether we are free or not we love Jesus and in loving him we find freedom we find healing and we find deliverance and lastly I want you to write this down your problem will be persistent therefore you must be consistent in your relationship with Jesus or I like to say it your issue will be persistent therefore your intimacy must be consistent the story comes from Esther is when Esther had an enemy in the palace she stopped being invited to the king she had to overcome this feeling I'm not being loved she had to overcome sense of guilt that's the first point the second thing is when Esther met the king as I mentioned she didn't ask for freedom she asked for lunch she wasn't asking for liberty she was asking for lunch she says let's go on a date even though she needed freedom 
don't be a person who uses God to get what you want even if what you want is something that God really wants from you too holiness and righteousness always come to God and say God I need your freedom I need your help but I'm here to worship I'm here to love you the way I am what I got right now is what I'm gonna give you and thirdly Esther when she asked for lunch with the king the first lunch she didn't tell him the problem she asked on the first lunch to have a second lunch meaning she said I'm gonna get this thing consistent I'm not just gonna pray one time and seek God I will pray consistently because your problem is persistent you must be consistent somebody say amen Jesus says to Lazarus come Lazarus comes Lazarus overcomes these difficult steps and then this is where the Lord says can I get some home group leaders Lazarus home group leaders to lose him so if we can get some guys who who tied him up who are his uh, this home group leaders are not here but if you have home group leaders almost home group leaders could we just lose him right now like right now <laughs> I want you to see this Lazarus was not loosed by Jesus he was raised by Jesus he was loosed by people Jesus will raise you home group leaders will lose you your believers will lose you other brothers and sisters will lose you your family members will help you that means the freedom is not always dependent on the anointed man of God sometimes it's anointed on the, it's the body of Jesus that brings freedom into your life can somebody say amen come on Jesus come on let's celebrate Omar right now thank you Lord Jesus Yo, renewing your mind is such a big difficult thing <laughs> I want you to see this is that he, he got everything but he got everything except let's go Omar let's go let's go no no wait, wait, wait. hold on hold on hold on hold on let's go let's go let's run let's run. hurry up come on come on come on you see like his face is good you know how have you noticed that everything you see right now is perfect but there is one more area you don't see it's his feet they're bound and see a lot of times this is where we stop we get free from the things that we're embarrassed of and the things that other people know of but there are still things that nobody else knows that you and I got that what they do in our spiritual life people don't see why you're still struggling let's go let's go is that you're slow because you're struggling because there's still areas nobody else sees that you know and what I want to challenge you with right now is don't only clean up the areas other people keep pointing to you clean the areas you are hurting in that nobody else knows that your spouse only knows your kids only know or your parents only know the areas that no longer get talked about by your friends or maybe some home group or something else the areas that only you know because these areas can still hold you back during this break free series our desire through home groups and through our services is not to punish the hurting but to help the hurting those who are struggling and to let you know help is on the way some areas God will send somebody to help you some areas only Jesus will raise you up but there will be areas the freedom you got you're gonna have to use to give freedom to yourself in other areas of your life Omar set yourself free start waking up for morning prayer start fasting start reading a Bible confess your sins to someone listen get a discipline do something you there are areas of your life Jesus can set you free but there are areas where Jesus gives you enough freedom where you can use to get yourself free Shanda glory Jesus come on somebody come on somebody give you a round of applause right now to Omar Omar you're free in Jesus name thank you thank you Jesus thank you Jesus